Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to look at uh, the last one that's left out, the many-to-many -many relationship. Uh, before we start many-to-many, -many, there's one uh, thing that I would like to show you when, um, with the you know one-to-many or the many-to-one relationship. Uh, this is something we did in our previous tutorial. We had a one-to-many relationship between the user object and uh, the vehicle object. And we had we just we just added the at one to many and what hibernated was by default it created a separate mapping table and it inserted the IDs of both the user as well as the vehicle into that mapping table and of course it had a separate table for the user and a separate table for the vehicle. There is one other way to represent a one to many or a many to one relationship and that is that the the object on the many side of the relationship has a reference to the other object. So now um, my user table cannot have a column for the vehicle ID because one user can have multiple vehicles. But the vehicle table can have a user ID column because any vehicle will have only one user. It's a, it's a many to one as far as uh, the vehicle side of the relationship is concerned. So I can as well have a user ID column in my vehicle table and uh, I can do the mapping there itself without having to have a separate table which has the mapping of the user and the vehicle ID. So in this tutorial, we're going to have a quick look at that before we move on to the many-to-many. -many. So what I need to do for that is, uh, first let me remove this configuration. Okay, so I have a one-to-many mapping for this one, which is uh, a vehicle collection inside the user object. And now I have a many to one mapping on this side, which is the vehicle, uh, the user instance in the vehicle object. Now, what I need to do is I need to say that this needs to have the mapping of that relationship. So what I do is I go here and in my one to many, I have this property called map by and what map by does is it says where you want the mapping to happen. I want the mapping to happen over here. This has to do the mapping. I don't want a separate table. So I say map by equals user. Okay, once this is done, what I'll do is I'll go to the vehicle class and uh, here under the mini to one uh, annotation, I will specify what is the join column. So I'll say add join column and uh, name equals, I'll give this a name, user ID. So I'm naming the join column that I'm creating inside the vehicle table itself. So once we put this annotation, Hibernate knows that the mapping is for this user and the join column is in this vehicle table. So instead of creating a new table, what it'll do is it'll just create a column inside the vehicle table and it'll have uh, the ID of the user saved here. So I will save both these classes and uh, let's run the test again. Okay, so here you can see it's inserted the user details, table, username and user ID. But if you look at the vehicle table, it has three columns. One is the user ID, the vehicle name and the vehicle ID. These two were already there. Now what we have done is instead of mapping the user ID with the vehicle ID in a separate table, we have done this mapping in the vehicle table itself. So this will uh, this will have the relationship inside the vehicle table itself. Okay, so now with this done, we'll have a look at many-to-many -many mapping. Now, many-to-many -many is, uh, is, again, there's only one way we can represent the many-to-many. -many. It has to have a mapping table because uh, assume a scenario where, you know, one uh, this is kind of a rental uh, vehicle and then a user can rent multiple vehicles and the vehicle can be rented by multiple users. So in that case, uh, one user might be having multiple vehicles allocated to that user and then a vehicle will have multiple users. So you cannot have the mapping either in the user table or in the vehicle table. It has to be a separate table. So. I'll remove these annotations here. We will continue to try, you know, have this uh, bi-directional relationship in this example as well. So let's remove these annotations. So here, just like I have a vehicle collection 
inside the user object, I need to have a user collection inside a vehicle object. So I will say collection of user details. I'll, I'll let the name be okay. I'll call this user list equals new array list. So I've defined this new collection here. Now let me clear out the getters and the setters so that I can create new getters and setters. So finish the import and then generate getters and setters. Okay, so now there is a bi-directional relationship and it is a many-to-many -many on both sides. So again, in order to configure it in Hibernate, it is as simple as writing a annotation many to many. And of course, the same thing applies here. So there is a many to many relationship on both ends. Now what we need to do is we need to change our test class. See, right now it's a it's a set user. So this changes now. So uh, this will probably be a get user list dot okay it's an add of user. The same way, get the user list and then add the user. Okay, now let's uh, save and run this. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now what's happening here? We have a user details uh, table, which has the username and the user ID. Now the vehicle table has the vehicle name and the vehicle ID. Now look at what's happening over here. It has created two relationship tables. It, there is one called user details underscore vehicle and uh, vehicle underscore user details. So what it's doing is, it's, it's having the same relationship. It's mapping the user ID to the vehicle ID in both. Here it's mapping the vehicle ID to the user ID. Now Hibernate does not know that it needs to just do one mapping. So it's actually doing two mappings. It's looking at uh, user details and when it is saving user details, it creates a mapping. And it, look, it looks at vehicle and when it saves a vehicle, it creates a mapping. So we need to tell Hibernate not to do this. We need to tell Hibernate to map for only one table. Let's have a look at the data so that we get a clearer picture. Um, let's take the user details table. Okay, one user. Fine. Now, vehicle. Two vehicles, which is also fine. Now, if you query user details underscore vehicle see it's mapping one to two and one to three now if you query vehicle underscore user details again you can see two is mapped to one and three is mapped to one so this is a redundant uh, mapping we don't need to have two different mappings so what do we do to make only one mapping happen? So what we do is we just pick one of these classes. Let's pick the user details class. And, uh, you know, we'll tell Hibernate that this class will have the mapping, which is it's mapping user detail and vehicle. It's be user detail 
two vehicles. So user ID forms the first column and the vehicle ID forms the second column. So once that happens, what we do is we go to the vehicle class and uh, we tell vehicle, same as what we did earlier, we say map by equals and uh, this is map by vehicle. So I will say, don't worry about the mapping. I'm already being mapped by the vehicle of this thing here, which is the user list. So what it does is it just looks up the vehicle mapping. Now I'll save this and now, now let's run this anyway. Let's, uh, let's see what happens if we run this. Run as Java application. There you go. The user details vehicle is the only table that is created because here, this many to many is doing the mapping and this many to many is not doing the mapping because we have, we have total hibernate that it's being mapped by the other class already. So you don't have to do the mapping. So this helps us to have only one table mapping. So hibernate knows that, okay, the mapping has to be done over here. And when it tries to look at the vehicle class, it does not do a mapping again. It does uh, it, you know, it knows that the mapping has already been done in the other class, which is the user details underscore vehicle. So, you know, it works fine. Now, if you want, uh, you know, vehicle underscore user details, you know, it, it's just a change in the you know order of the columns, which really doesn't matter. But uh, in that case, what you would do is you would cha change it in the user details uh, class. You would say map by user of this object. So in that case, this annotation, this many to many annotation would take care of the configuration. Now, again, uh, the same uh, configuration which we did earlier applies. Now you can go to this user details uh, annotation. Here you can define what is the join table name, the join column name. It's as simple as saying add join column inside add join table. Now you would also have to do the same thing that we did earlier. You would have to have a join column and an inverse join column. So you're naming both the user ID column as well as the vehicle ID column. But note that since you have mentioned here that you know it's mapped by vehicle of the other class, your uh, join table, join column configurations have to be inside this class, which is the user details class, because this many to many is the one that's creating this table here. So that's how you, uh, you know, create a many to many relationship between two objects. Now we have looked at um, all the possible combinations. We have looked at one to one, one to many and many to one and many to many. Now there are a few concepts here that are common across all these three uh, mapping you know, combinations and we'll have a look at what those concepts are in the next tutorial.